thanks again for joining us. Okay, so looking back on recent history, we have, uh, we remember the Czech munition explosions that were attributed to Russian agents. Uh, we saw the expulsion of most of the embassy staff in Prague because Czechs were the first to say that these are all spies. In fact, they're not diplomats. Uh, if we fast forward to today, we see that the ammunition coalition is being led by the Czech Republic and the Czech Republic is also uh, exposing many more spy networks. Uh, would you say and agree with the statement uh, that karma's a bitch for, uh, for, for Russian spies, first of all. Mm -hmm. And second of all, do you think that um, Czech Republic got a boost by uh, ever since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine? I would agree. Uh, I would say that Czech Republic has taken a turn. If you might remember, a couple of years ago, Czech Republic had a president who was basically a traitor working for Russia and China. And we had a very soft government, which, which did not really oppose hostile Russian actions. But since 2021, we have a new government. And since, since last year, we have a new president, which both are very hawkish on Russia and very supportive of Ukraine in very practical action. So there is a political turnaround here in Czech Republic, which... Uh, in, in terms of foreign policy, is supported by most of the population. Um, I would say, for example, we are also hosting the largest uh, portion of Ukrainian refugees per capita in Europe. Uh, and there are many good things which are happening for a 10 million country in support of Ukraine. Um, but in terms of uh, Russian intelligence operations, Czech Republic historically has been also used as a basically entry point inside Germany. Uh, and uh, that's something what unfortunately today is pretty much staying with Austria, Hungary and slowly Slovakia as well, where we see more and more of Russian intelligence activity, which is not opposed by the local government, such as in Slovakia, for example. Uh, I'm conscious that we have limited time, so I wanted to just take things to a little bit of a practical level for our viewers. We're aware of the fact now that Russia has basically been in infiltrating um, media campaigns for a while now, and this is very obvious with uh, what uh, the Czechs have discovered along with the polls. Um, can you give our viewers perhaps a little bit of advice as to what to look out for? Because now we know that, you know, we get all our information basically online, and this is what the Russians are taking advantage of. I would say the most uh, important advice would be to use credible sources because uh, it's hard for any individual, regardless of age, education or knowledge, to really assess every information out there. When it comes to, let's say, technical parts of technical details about the war, for example, or anything like that. So I think the core of it is trust and trust towards, uh, tr let's say, trusted uh, sources of information. It could be public media, it could be general mainstream media in particular countries, and it's also important to actually get the knowledge or information anybody gets from multiple mainstream trusted media sources. And then you could pretty much be sure that the world view which you are getting from uh, the information space is pretty much accurate or according to reality. But I think a lot of people take pride in the fact that they share their information and the news items and opinions, especially from credible sources. And I think that's how, you know, discussions develop and they say credible sources. And yet I think, you know, this infiltration has still succeeded. It has, but I mean, what has succeeded pretty much is basically a Russian state, which acts as a terrorist state at this moment, and for, for many years, unfortunately, has actually been bribing individual European politicians who are willing to basically sell their, their I would say, political individual soul in uh, for Russian dirty money, so they would become de facto ambassadors of Russian, Russian interest inside of Europe. Um, and I mean, in every society, we have traitors. That's historically always the truth. The difference or the question is, what do you do about it as an overall society? Meaning, if they get high enough in our governments and they, are, they can basically sell our, sell our countries for some dirty money, I mean, that was the case of the previous Czech president, for example, um, or some of the far right in Europe. And as we see now in this practical example from today, we see very well how, that there are many far right political leaders in European countries, uh, which are effectively supporting Russian terrorism, not only in Ukraine, but also against their own countries. Um, so I think it's uh, 
uh, very natural in democracies to happen to ha have this happen. But um, every liberal democracy can and should be actually very firm in defending itself. And we have legal tools to do it. It's perfectly okay for our agencies to expose it. Um, but we really need to be strict about it because we are at the brink of a large European war, unfortunately. Do you think that this problem of, of these so-called agents of influence within the political ranks, um, do you think that there's much more of them than we are aware of? Do you think this is the tip of the iceberg? Mm -hmm. Uh, almost definitely, we could see it uh, basically every couple of months. There is no, there is new public knowledge about uh, new individuals across Europe doing this. Uh, I think it's important because the public exposure actually helps the overall understanding, uh, but also deters others other European politicians actually joining this uh, this horrible job of selling themselves and their countries to Russia or to China. So I think the public exposure is very important. And uh, clearly there is an understanding among European agencies, uh, intelligence agencies, which are exposing this now, quite often in coordination, such as, for example, now the Czech and the Polish one doing it quite well together, apparently, and many others joining, maybe not so visibly. Um, so they, they are trying basically def to defend it. As we have military as we have our soldiers defending the borders or, or defending our land physically. Country intelligence agencies actually do it as well, even though they are not so publicly visible. But when they do, it's a huge hit, such as, such as this one. Okay, thank you very much for joining us, Jakub Jan, the Director for European Value Centre for Security Policy in Prague. Thanks ever so much for joining us on TVP World. Thank you. Thank you for having me.